good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. That's right, we're going to be continuing in the book of Jasher, and we are in chapter 60. And when the year came round, being the 72nd year from the Israelites going down to Egypt, after the death of Joseph, Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, fled from Egypt, he and his men, and they went away. And he came to Africa, which is Dinhatba, to Agias, king of Africa. And Agias received him with great honor. And he made Zepho the captain of his host. And Zepho found favor in the sight of Agias and in the sight of his people. And Zepho was captain of the host to Agias, king of Africa, for many days. And Zepho enticed Agias, king of Africa, to collect all his army to go and fight with the Egyptians and with the sons of Jacob, and to avenge of them the cause of his brethren. But Agias would not listen to Zepho to do this thing. For Agias knew the strength of the sons of Jacob and what they had done to his army in the warfare with the children of Esau. And Zepho was in those days very great in the sight of Agias and in the sight of all his people. And he continually enticed them to make war against Egypt, but they would not. And it came to pass in those days there was in the land of Chittim a man of the city of Puzima, Zimna, whose name was Yuz, Uzu, Yuz, and he became degenerately defied, and he became degenerately defied by the children of Chittim, and the man died and had no son, only one daughter whose name was Jana. And the damsel was exceedingly beautiful, comely, and intelligent. There was none seen like her for beauty and wisdom throughout the land. And the people of Agias, king of Africa, saw her, and they came and praised her unto him. And Agias sent to the children of Chittim, and he requested to take her unto himself for a wife. And the people of Chittim consented to, consented to give her unto him for a wife. And when the messengers of Agias were going out from the land of Chittim to take their journey, behold, the messengers of Turnus, king of Bai Bintu, came unto Chittim. For Turnus, king of Bai Bintu, also sent his messengers to request Jana for him to take unto himself for a wife. For all this, for all his men had also praised her to him. Therefore he sent all his servants unto her. And the servants of Turnus came to Chittim, and they asked for Jana to be taken unto Turnus, their king, for a wife. And the people of Chittim said unto them, We cannot give her, because Agias, king of Africa, desired her to take her unto him for a wife before you came, and that we should give her unto him. And now therefore we cannot do this thing to deprive Agias of the damsel in order to give her unto Turnus. For we are greatly afraid of Ag 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 Agias, lest he come in battle against us and destroy us. And Turnus, your master, will not be able to deliver us from his hand. And when the messengers of Turnus heard all the words of the children of Chittim, they turned back to their master and told him all the words of the children of Chittim. And the children of Sh Chittim sent a memorial to Agias, saying, Behold, Turnus has sent for Jana to take her unto him for a wife. And thus have we answered him. And we heard that he has collected his all, whole army, to go to war against you, and he intends to pass by the road of Sarduna, Dunia, to fight against your brother Lucas, and after that he will come to fight against you. 
And Agias heard the words of the children of Chittim, which they sent to him in, in the record. And his anger was kindled, and he rose up and assen assembled his whole army and came through the islands of the sea, the road to Sardunia, unto his brother Lucas, king of Sardunia. And Biblos, the son of Lucas, heard that his uncle Agius was coming, and he went out to meet him with a heavy army, and he kissed him and embraced him. And Niblos said unto Agius, When you ask my father about his welfare, when I go, will go with you to fight with Turnus, ask of him to make me captain of the host. And Agius did so, and he came unto his brother, and his brother came to meet him. And he asked him after his welfare. And Agius asked his brother Lucas after his welfare, and to make his son Niblos captain of his host. And Lucas did so. And Agius and his brother Lucas rose up, and they went toward Turnus to battle. And there was with them a great army and a heavy people. And he came in ships, and they came into the province of Ashtoresh. And behold, Turnus came toward them. For he went out to Sardunia, and intended to destroy it, and afterward to pass on from there to Agius to fight with him. And Agius and Lucas, his brother, met Turnus in the valley of Canopia, and the battle was strong and mighty between them in that place. And the battle was severe upon Lucas, king of Sardunia, and all his army fell, and Niblos, his son, fell also in that battle. And his uncle Agius commanded his servants, and they made a golden coffin for Niblos, and they put him into it, and Agius again waged battle toward Turnus. And Agius was stronger than he, and he slew him, and he smote all his people with the edge of the sword. And Agius avenged the cause of Niblos, his brother's son, and the cause of the army of, Luke, of his brother Lucas. And when Turnus died, the hands of those that survived the battle became weak. And they fled from Agius and Lucas' his brother. And Agius and his brother Lucas pursued them unto the high road, which is between Alphenu and Roma. And they slew the whole army of Turnus with the edge of the sword. And Lucas, king of Sardunia, commanded his servants that they should make a coffin of brass, and that they should place therein the body of his son Niblos, and they buried him in that place. And they built upon it a high tower, there upon the high road, and they called it after the name of Niblos unto this day. And they also buried Turnus, king of by, ben, by Bentu, there in that place with Niblos. And behold, upon the high road between al Fanu and Roma, the graves of Niblos is on one side, and the grave of Turnus on the other side, and a pavement between them unto this day. And when Niblos was buried, Lucas his father returned with his army to the land Sardunia, and Agius his brother, king of Africa, went with his people unto the city of Bintu, that is, the city of Turnus. And the inhabitants of Bibentu heard of his fame, and they were greatly afraid of him. And they went out to meet him with weeping and supplication. And the inhabitants of Bibentu entreated of Agius not to slay them nor destroy their city. And he did so, for Bibentu was in those days reckoned as one of the cities of the children of Chittim. Therefore he did not destroy the city. But from that day forward, the troops of the king of Africa would go to Chittim to spoil and plunder it. And whenever they went, Zepho, the captain of the host of Agias, would go with them. And it was after this that Agias turned with his army, and they came to the city of Puzimna. And Agias took from there Jenna, the daughter of Uz, 
Uz for a wife and brought her unto his city, unto Africa. And as always, <laughs> I love you.